In this experiment, you aim to twirl a bung round in horizontal circles of fixed radius. The weight of the masses hanging on the end provides a tension in the string which then provides a centripetal force to cause the circular motion. You can change the amount of mass on the end and see how that affects the time period for you twirling it round in stable circular motion. Let's pause the video and derive the expected relationship. I'm going to call the mass of the bung little m and I'm going to call the mass hanging on the far end big M, which means that the weight acting down from the mass hanging on the end is going to be mg. And if we ignore a small amount of friction which will be acting at this point here, then we can assume that the tension is the same throughout. So therefore, the centripetal force on the bung is going to be provided by this big mg. The equation for centripetal force required for circular motion is that the centripetal force required is equal to the mass doing the circular motion times the speed squared of the object doing circular motion divided by the radius of the circular motion. So because we've said that the centripetal force is being provided by big Mg, we can say that big Mg is equal to little m v squared over r. Really important not to confuse little m, the mass of the bung, and big M, the mass that's hanging on the end. An easy mistake to make. Now what we want to do is replace this expression for speed squared with an expression involving the distance that the bung does in one complete circle and the time period. So when it does one complete circle round, the bung will have travelled a distance 2 pi r, and that will take place in a time of capital T, the time period. So therefore, we can say that V is equal to 2 pi r over T. If we then square this, we would get that V squared is equal to 4 pi squared r squared divided by T squared. We can now take this expression for V squared and replace the V squared in our mg equals mv squared over r, which will give us mg equals m times 4 pi squared r squared divided by r t squared. We can cancel this r with one of the r's on the top and then we can simplify that slightly and rewrite it as mg equals 4 pi squared r m times 1 over t squared. I can now divide both sides by g and compare to the equation for a straight line. So if I plot big M, the mass that I hang on the end, as my y, and I plot 1 over t squared, 1 over the time period squared, as my x, then my gradient of the straight line graph should come out as 4 pi squared r m, the mass of the bung, divided by g. So that gives me my independent variable, the mass that I hang on the end, my dependent variable, the time period of the circular motion, and then it tells me that I'm going to plot that graph of the mass that I'm hanging on the end, big M, against 1 over t squared. It also tells me that the radius of the circular motion and the mass of the bung doing the circular motion are control variables that I should keep the same. Let's have a look at the equipment that you'll need to do this experiment. So you'll definitely need some safety glasses or goggles because you're quite likely to hit yourself in the face with the bung as you try and twirl it round. I've got a 25 gram bung and with that I find that going from 50 grams up to 300 grams with 50 gram masses is about right. You'll need a glass tube that must be very smooth around the top uh, and through that you'll need to thread the string and put a clear mark about 30 centimetres from the end of the string, which I've just done with a marker pen. It's helpful to have a rubber tube that fits tightly over the glass tube to make it easier to hold and less likely to crush the glass tube and cut yourself. To keep the radius as a control variable all the time, you're going to need to make sure that your marker here remains in the same place. Whilst you're getting it going into a nice stable circular motion, you may find it helpful to hold the string at the bottom. 
But once you've got it going, you shouldn't need to because it's the tension from the weight hanging on the end which is making the circular motion. You can see as we increase there from 100 grams to 200 grams hanging on the end that we need to spin it faster with a shorter time period to remain stable. And as we go up to 300 grams on the end, we need to spin it really much, much faster in order to get it stable. For each amount of mass hanging on the end, once you've got it stable, you'll need to measure the time for 10 time periods. And in order to do that, you'll need to start counting from zero. Let's use the slow motion footage to illustrate this. So I would start the stopwatch now, which was zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and stop on 10. Obviously, it's a good idea to do three repeats of measuring the 10 time periods, calculate an average, and then divide by 10 to get your average time for one time period. I hope that you now understand how to carry out an experiment to test the centripetal force equation.